the Oliver Hazard Perry class. Shortly the Perry class frigates are still taking on important missions in the world's seas, although they were decommissioned by the US Navy. They have served all over the world, since 1977. These ships proved their worth in the real war in the Persian Gulf. The frigate became a true legend by performing many firsts over 40 years of duty. Now we are investigating the Perry class, which has accomplished many firsts over 40 years, as well as its successful career. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel before we start. Perhaps the most used word when referring to Perry class is first. The US Navy changed the classification of surface combatants in 1975. Thus, the Brooke, Garcia, and Knox classes, previously described as escort destroyers, were reclassified into frigates. The Perry is the first surface combatant designed as a frigate according to this new classification. This class of ships, which were defined as patrol frigates during the study phase, were reclassified as guided missile frigates before they were commissioned. The Perry class was designed to protect amphibious landing forces, supply and replenishment groups, and merchant convoys from aircraft and submarines. But later, these surface combatants were also part of battleships entered surface action groups and aircraft carrier strike groups. The Perry class is the first ship designed by computer. The first ship of the class, USS Oliver Hazard Perry, were commissioned in 1977. The USA, which originally planned to build 75 of these frigates, later reduced this number to 50, due to budget cuts. However, it was later approved for the building of the 51st ship, USS Ingraham. There are two versions of the frigate, short hull which is 136 meters long, and long hull which is 138 meters long. Outside the USA, these frigates were also built in Australia, Spain, and Taiwan. Unlike US versions, the ships built in Australia have a sloping helipad and 2.4 meters longer hull. The Spanish models, defined as the Santa Maria class, are 138.8 meters long. The beam of these ships is 14.3 meters. The frigates built it in Taiwan are defined as the Corn Count class and have a length of 138 meters and a beam of 14.3 meters. The USA decommissioned the last of these ships in 2015 and Australia in 2019. The Perry class is still used by Bahrain, Chile, Egypt, Pakistan, Poland, Spain, Taiwan, and Turkey. The full loaded displacement of the ship was 4,100 tons. The Perry class has nearly 136 meters length, 14 meters beam, and 7.5 meters draft. The long hull version of the frigate is 138 meters long. Two 20,500 horsepower GELM 2,500 gas turbine engines provided 29 knots maximum speed. Two 350 horsepower retractable electric azimuth thrusters are used for maneuvering and docking. The frigate can sail 8,330 kilometers at an economic speed of 20 knots. The RIM-66 standard SM-1 air defense and RGM-84 Harpoon anti-ship missile can be launched from the single-arm Mark 13 Mod 4 launcher of the Perry class. There is also one 76mm single-barrel Mark 75 gun and one 20mm six-barrel Mark 15 phalanx closing weapon system on the frigate. The ship has two triple 324mm torpedo tubes. The Perry class can carry two helicopters. Many users have equipped their ships with machine guns of various calibers. Australia had even integrated them in a Typhoon remotely controlled weapon stations with 12.7mm machine gun to its frigates, which it describes as the Adelaide class. The Santa Maria class ships had Maroka closing weapon systems instead of phalanxes. Taiwanese frigates have additional 240mm and 220mm guns. The decks of these ships have been modified to integrate Xiong Fong 2 and Xiong Fong 3 anti ship missiles. Chile's two Adelaide class frigates that they purchased from Australia and commissioned in 2020 have an 8 cell vertical launching system suitable for firing RIM 162 ESSM air defense missiles. Each cell can carry four missiles. 
In addition, these ships carry RIM-67 standard SM-2 missiles, not RIM-66 standard SM-1. Similarly, the Turkish Navy has equipped four Peri classes with an 8-cell vertical launching system for the RIM-162. There are some complaints about the Peri class. For example, the position of the 76mm gun causes large blind spots. The gun can be fired only from the sides. Therefore, while the ship is heading over a target, it is also unable to conduct suppressing fire on it. The location of the close-in weapon system above the hangar also creates large blind spots, being able to shoot only at the targets that are approaching from the aft area. Another complaint is that the superstructure is of relatively less durable aluminium. In December 1982, Perry-class USS Duncan developed a 12 meters fissure in her superstructure during a storm. It was a class design deficiency that occurred on other frigates. However, the ship has 19 mm thick Kevlar armor in vital spaces. The engine room is reinforced with 16 mm thick steel and magazine with 19 mm thick aluminium plates. Despite all the complaints, the Perry class proved to have exceptional survivability. On July 14, 2016, a decommissioned Perry class frigate, USS Thake, was used as a target ship. During the live fire exercise, she was hit by four Harpoon, two Hellfire, one Maverick missiles, and two bombs as well as one Mark 48 torpedo. After these hits, it took 12 hours for the frigate to sink. Similarly, another decommissioned Perry class ship, USS Rent, was used as target ship at the same exercise and sank in five hours after sustaining 22 missile hits. The Perry class is the first U.S. Navy surface combatant whose gas turbine propulsion system also allowed the ship's speed to be controlled directly from the bridge via a throttle control. The propeller of the single shaft frigate has lower impact on the bottom and higher impact on the top. Therefore, at the speeds above 12 knots, the stern of the frigate slides in the direction of the starboard. However, Thanks to the its auxiliary engines and advanced steering system, the ship can be easily controlled and has high maneuverability. By using its two auxiliary engines, the Perry class can travel at speed of 6 knots. The ship creates air bubbles around the engine and hull to reduce the acoustic signature. The combat career of the Perry class frigates began quickly. USS Clifton Sprague was part of the forces during Operation Urgent Fury. The has led 1983 invasion of Grenada. But they got their real reputation in the Persian Gulf. By 1984, there was a balance on the ground front of the Iran-Iraq war. Iraq decided to engage in a war of attrition against its enemy in hopes of breaking the balance and started attacking Iran's oil tankers. When Iran responded to these attacks, oil shipment to the world started to interrupt through the Persian Gulf and the Straits of Hormuz, the U.S. Navy deployed surface combatants to the area to secure the shipment. The main task of this task force was to escort tankers against attacks from Iran. But the first major attack on American surface combat ships came from Iraq. On May 17, 1987, the Perry-class frigate USS Stark, who patrolled in the Persian Gulf, was hit with by two Exocita M-39s. The missiles had been fired not from a usual combat aircraft like Mirage F-1 but a modified Falcon 50 of the Iraqi Air Force. For this reason, the crew of the frigate could not evaluate the tactical situation correctly. Deciding that the speed of the threat directed at them was low compared to a combat plane and high compared to a helicopter, the captain of the USS Stark had not operated countermeasure systems. When Exocet's TSC radar became active within 10 kilometers, it was realized that the frigate was under attack. Although the ship also had decoys and the Mark 15 phalanx close-in weapon system, it was too late to respond. One missile detonated, the other did not. However, the fuel of the non-detonated missile also caused a fire. Despite the heavy damage, USS Stark survived without sinking. In July of the same year, Another Perry-class frigate USS Rents involved naval gun bombardment and SEAL team took over of an abandoned oil rig being used by the Iranian Revolutionary Guard to stage attacks on Persian Gulf shipping. On April 14, 1988, 
same class USS Samuel B. Roberts frigate hit the mine in the same area and managed to reach Bahrain thanks to her auxiliary engines. On September 21, 1987, three U.S. Army helicopters attacked on Iranian ship Iran Age, which conducted mine laying operation. It is known that at least one of these helicopters flew from USS Jarrett. On April 18, 1988, the Perry-class USS Simpson, along with USS Wainwright Cruiser and Knox-class USS Bagley frigate, destroyed Iranian naval and intelligence facilities on the oil platform. One day later, the Iranian Command-class missile patrol boat Joshin attacked at USS Simpson with a harpoon missile. The frigate returned missile fire. The missile hit the Joshin, which was then sunk by combined gunfire. With Iraq's invasion of Kuwait in 1990, these frigates once again went to the Persian Gulf to fight. On August 18, 1990, USS Reed fired the first shots of Operation Desert Shield. During the 1991 Gulf War, USS Nicholas sunk or damaged seven Iraqi patrol boats, destroyed eight drifting mines. The Iraqi garrison on Keru Highland was captured by the soldiers, embarked from helicopters flew from USS Kurt, on January 24, 1991. The frigate also destroyed two mines, sank an Iraqi mine layer and provided support to combat helicopter operations during the Battle of Babian Island. In addition to being a good warrior, the Perry class has been a good diplomat and has achieved many firsts in this area. In 1986, USS Rents was part of an historic visit to China, the first as naval visit to this country after 37 years. In 1992, USS McCluskey visited Vladivostok in the Russian Federation, the first ship to do so after the breakup of the Soviet Union. In 1997, USS Sign became the first as surface combatant to visit two Russian ports in the same deployment, with stops in Baltiysk and Severomorsk. In 2003, USS Nicholas entered Neom, Bosnia and Herzegovina. It was important because no surface combatant had not visited this city since 1917. Also, the frigate was the first U.S. warship ever visit Neom. At the same year, USS Vandegrift became the first as surface combatant to enter Vietnamese waters since 1975. USS Gary the first as warship to visit Cambodia after the end of the Vietnam War, was also the Perry class. Australia's frigates took part in many military missions, including 1987 Fijian Coast Dietat, 1999 Interfet Peacekeeping Mission, 2000 Solomon Islands Civil War, War in Afghanistan, and the 2003 invasion of Iraq. Additionally, in 1995, the Adelaide class Hamas Sydney became the first Royal Australian Navy warship to visit the Russian port of Vladivostok. In 2014, the Turkish Navy's Barbaros Task Group passed through the Cape of Good Hope for the first time after 1866. TCGG Dies, who was part of this task group, was also a Perry class frigate. Although many users tried to keep their Perry class up to date with various modernizations, it is now an outdated surface combatant in terms of modern naval combat requirements. In addition, these ships are approaching the end of their economic life. The USA, which suffered from the escort ship, evaluated reactivating these frigates, but did not find this plan effective and economical. Although his glorious days are now over, the Perry class proved repeatedly itself as a successful frigate in war and peace. It deserves to be mentioned as a legend. Thanks for watching our new video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel.